Hey y'all, here are OS Reviews. Earlier this year, we checked out two Android-based digital MP3 players, the first one called the M4, having a smaller 4-inch display, and then later on, we saw the Pesu PS5 that had a larger 5-inch screen, a pretty modern design. Aside from local content, you could also stream it using various applications, including Tidal, Amazon Music, Audible, Spotify, and that's the reason why it has a built-in Wi-Fi, Bluetooth chip, as well as the Android operating system, albeit it's still a little bit more locked down. There isn't access to the regular Google Play Store, but still it offers a pretty powerful experience for a relatively low price. They were taking a look at their newest model, which is the Pesu G5. As the name implies, this is another 5-inch MP3 player running on Android, and in fact it has almost identical specs to the PS5 from before, including the same octa-core processor coupled with 3 gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of built-in storage, which is further expandable via a micro SD card slot. With that being said, the battery capacity on the G5 is 2000 milliamp hours compared to 2500 on the PS5, so that one actually has a larger capacity. But the G5 gains access to the regular Google Play Store, meaning that you're able to directly install additional applications, and also now features a easy record key if you want to instantly record any voice memos, there's a button located on the side of the unit. And also still packs in support for lossless audio formats like FLAC, packaging content. Aside from the player itself, we also get a USB Type-C charging and sync cable in addition to a quick user guide along with a free screen protector. And we can see that there is already a factory pre-applied screen protector. If we take a closer look at the design of the G5 first, I will say that dimensions are a little bit larger than the PS5 from before, as you can see there side by side, primarily because this model does have a slightly larger bezel there at the top. The model here though is undeniably very well built because aside from the glass front and back, it has aluminum rails which are very hefty and solid. The right hand spine have access to a power key, a volume rocker, and then this is the aforementioned easy voice recorder key. There's also the micro SD card slot supporting up to 1 TB SD cards. USB Type-C charging cable, there is a loudspeaker, and then one aux 3.5mm jack. So one other difference compared to the PS5 is we are losing that second 3.5mm output. But again, that feature may not have been super mainstream, so whether or not it's going to be something that matters to you depends on your usage. Now the main lock screen here is kind of interesting because the wallpaper that it's using is actually the same as some of those older Sony Xperia phones. But overall, it's still attractive with large menus for navigating around the UI. There is no universal app drawer though, so we have all these separate pages. It gets reasonably bright, so even if there's a bit of light hitting on it, you're still able to make out details without any issues. May not be the highest resolution panel, but perfectly serviceable. However, the viewing angles on the G5 seem to be a little bit more limited than the PS5 from before. I say that because if you're tilting the screen upwards, as you can see there, it seems to wash out a little bit more easily compared to the PS5 from before. It just seems to have a little bit more general as angles as you're tilting it, colors are largely retained a little bit better. With that being said, if you are someone that's primarily streaming videos, then a phone will probably still be your best bet because our phone displays often are using AMOLED, they're larger, it's going to be a more cinematic experience. This I think is still primarily meant for music streaming. Otherwise, the UI here is clean. We have a drag down notification shade for accessing quick shortcuts, including Miracast functionality. One thing though is this particular unit does not have a built-in camera. And obviously with these Android dApps, the size of the unit is no longer as small as some of the super compact or clip style MP3 players. Compared to something like an average phone that has a 6.7 inch screen, you get the idea there. The first music app here opens up relatively quick and that's a theme that's echoed mostly across the device unless you're using it for intensive gaming. All the menus and navigation feel pretty speedy and responsive. You can also sort here by album as well as art and playlists, and overall it works well enough in terms of giving you an attractive user interface, things are quick to load, and you can still use Bluetooth buds, or of course using standard headphones, plugging them in and enjoying the music. The overall quality of the music player using the headphone jack is very good. It's a comfortable listening experience and sucks you in with all the 
Various details you're able to hear. It packs plenty of power to drive larger impedance headphones, studio style headphones, so you can pack those in, listen to your music. It's a very clean output as well, so there is no static or hissing, nothing of that sort. Everything feels like a very smooth experience. Other built in apps include a calculator right up in center, basic but works just fine. There is an accelerometer on here, as you can see. There's also a simple calendar which allows you to sync data over with your Google account if desired. Hopping into the Google Play Store here, what's nice here is you are able to install software updates from various apps as well as additional content streaming apps that you would typically want to use. Now the second panel here allows you to tr file transfer which is actually a Wi-Fi file transfer. Send or receive content like music files with another device that has the mini share app including PCs and other smartphones and Android products which is a pretty neat idea so you can use this as an alternative to the cable method of transferring content. A simple clock widget is also built on in, along with access to a dictionary. So there's a handful of, I wouldn't call it bloatware, but also third-party utility tools that are pre-bundled with this. There is the aforementioned voice recorder, which we can also trigger just by tapping on that red key. Let's try that in fact. I'm going to press and instantly you can see the recording has started after a split second delay. Here's a quick test. So as we can hear, it's a little bit on the tinny or shallow side. It's perfectly fine for meetings and notes, but not really the best mic if you're trying to use it for music recording, for example. The speaker quality, as you can hear, is also a little bit on the shallow side that's built directly on the player. So for the best quality, you really should be connecting it to regular headphones or using a Bluetooth speaker at the end of the day. Uh, but overall, still a nice quick launch shortcut. FM radio does require you to use headphones to act as the antenna. Some other applications here include a quick ebook, which is just a text reader. We also have a handful of streaming apps here like Spotify built on in. Echoing a remark from the PS5, the two other audio player apps I think are a little bit more visually attractive. This one called Amp uses a series of swipe gestures to navigate around. It has a really clean user interface that I do appreciate. It also gets you more granular controls for things like balance as well as speed of playback. The third music playing app called High Beat Music uh, is also one that is reasonably attractive, a little bit more advanced than the first one that we saw, but the UI is not quite as elegant as the second one by contrast. Still, one of the features of the High Beat player is it does allow you to connect to the cloud and stream music over Tidal, so it's kind of an integrated app which allows you to play offline content plus online content in one interface because this is Android 8.0 is going to rely on the hotkeys at the bottom as opposed to gesture but overall it still works well enough under advanced settings you're able to take a closer look at some other properties primarily in terms of storage you can tell that out of the box around 24 gigs is free for you to install other programs now the final tab here includes a few apps that I've installed just for kicks including the YouTube app from the Play Store overall it works just fine the keyboard by the way is pretty easy to type on although there is no haptic feedback on this model things are still relatively quick to load and you can crank up the sound again a demo of what the speakers are like not the greatest in the world that's built on in but again it works in a pinch and here's an example of what it's like watching back a quick video clip It does an okay job when you're looking at it mostly head on, but because of the slightly more limited viewing angles, it's not the best, again, screen for watching back media, I'd say but overall, again, still works in a pinch. Now, last but not least, if we're doing a little bit of light gaming, the emphasis is on light because of the relatively lower end chipset as compared to phones. Uh, it still is doing a decent job for titles like Stack, Crossy Road, Angry Birds, things like that, which are a little bit more old or have more limited animation styles. You can still get by and there's not too much lag or delay. But of course, if you're trying to push it with titles like Asphalt or PUBG, it's going to struggle a lot more because that's not the main selling point of this unit. It's primarily on getting you better quality audio through the DAC, as well as getting you a slightly better experience for music streaming as opposed to powerful uh, video watching, gaming GPU performance. But again, overall still is doing a decent job if you want to access some limited, simple apps. So that's more or less it as far as our quick hands-on review of Pesu's new G5 MP3 player. As aforementioned, it definitely has a few advantages, one of them being that it now supports Google Play Store, as well as the fact that it's still very well built and has an easy voice recording key. Downsides though, compared to the 
PS5 from before include the screen, I think is a little bit of a step down in terms of the viewing angles as well as the slightly smaller battery. So if those are areas that matters more to you, then I think that previous model is definitely worth considering. Ultimately though, it's great to see that these Android-based music players are gaining a little bit more traction, the cost is starting to come down, and it's a lot more affordable. So if you're still looking for a dedicated player, then this is actually not a bad choice to consider these units from Pesu. Check out more details if interested in the links below, but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews, that's been the G5.